What's up everybody? It's Jay Anarchon with Cognitive Concurrence here. I just wanted to do a quick video on becoming a self-starter, uh, kind of to go along with uh, the last episode I put out, episode 7 of Cognitive Concurrence. Um, I realized that I suggested being self-employed as well as producing things and a lot of the people out there just don't have the tools they need um, to manage their own time and help themselves to develop the skills necessary that are required to maintain um, the freedom that they can achieve once they've achieved it. Um, so I just wanted to run over uh, seven ways to become a self-starter. So these are things that you can start doing in your life today that will sort of help you to develop the skills necessary for what you might try to take on tomorrow. Um, you know, there, it, it's kind of like that winning the lottery situation. You know, I'm sure everybody's heard that a lot of the people that win the lottery, they actually end off worse financially than before they had the money. And that's because they didn't have the skills to manage the resources that they got when they got them. So it's very important to develop a foundation for everything that you want to do moving forward. So let's look at seven ways that you can improve Improve your habits and help yourself to become a self-starter. So number one is start getting healthier. You're going to want to focus on your physical, mental, and spiritual health. Start eating healthy. Um, you know, a healthy body is going to help you think clearer, make better decisions, and manage everything better. So step one is going to be to start getting healthier. Step two is to follow a daily routine. This is very important. Anybody that's successful at anything follows a routine or a training schedule or something of the sort, even if it's uh, only specifically related to the one thing. So say somebody is a professional hockey player, they'll have a very strict hockey training schedule and obviously most of their other things will revolve around that. So for somebody that's, you know, the average person, it's still very important to develop a daily routine for yourself that you'll follow and it will help you to be successful and help you to develop a rhythm in your life and the will to maintain your schedule when things come up um, that might distract you from what you're trying to achieve. So even if you work a job right now for somebody else and your schedule's you know, from, from your perspective, very tied up. Most people, if you sit down and actually take a look at your time, evaluate your priorities and develop a reasonable schedule, you'll be surprised what you can fit into your time. So follow a daily routine. Step three is set and follow a realistic sleep schedule. So this will be part of your daily routine, but a lot of people just simply aren't getting enough sleep. And this is specific from person to person. Some people are good off of six hours. Some people need eight or nine, right? So this is something you need to listen to your own biology with. Um, and improving your physical health overall will help you to require less sleep and less rejuvenation because you'll be in a healthier state to begin with. So when you're setting up up your daily routine be sure to allow time for proper sleep um, you know eight hours is not unreasonable even if you only need six to seven there might be days where you need extra recovery time or who knows what right so be sure to incorporate that into your schedule number four is don't let others manage your time so you've developed this daily routine you've set some priorities for yourself and now you have you know everybody crawling out of the woodwork trying to distract you from from what you're trying what you're trying to achieve right so it's very important to to take control of your own life, take control of your own time. Don't let other people steal your time from you. Don't be a victim of other people's schedule um, and, and just really prioritize yourself. Number five is develop the ability to prioritize tasks. Um, there's a rule in the business and success world, it's called the 80-20 rule, and basically this principle is as follows. 80% um, of your income 
will come from 20% of your most important and most reliable clients. The other 20% of your income will typically come from 80% of your harder to manage and one-offs and stuff like that. So the 80-20 rule can apply to profits and income for a business or a person, and it can also apply to time management. 20% of what you apply your time to will actually achieve 80% of what you need to achieve to reach your goals. So by prioritizing your tasks, usually in a list form is what I recommend with numbers, um, you know, number one being the most important to uh, whatever number being the least important. As you scratch off and achieve number one, move on to number two and, and make everything and, and uh, renumber everything accordingly. So number two would become number one, number three would become number two. And by doing this, you always focus on your most important task and you're always working on that top 20% that's going to push you towards 80% of achieving your goal. So it's a very important thing, um, very important aspect of proper time management is the ability to prioritize tasks properly. Check out the 80-20 rule. There's tons of successful people that do a bunch of work out there, tons of free videos on YouTube. So definitely something you'll want to look into if you haven't really studied time management or success at all in the past. Be reliable and accountable. And number one, this goes back to don't letting others manage your time for you. You have to be reliable and accountable to yourself first. Um, you know, it's just like... Uh, say a personal trainer, would you, would you take advice from a personal trainer or hire a personal trainer that's very out of shape? Probably not, right? So you can't expect yourself to be reliable and accountable to other people in a self-managed situation when you can't even be reliable and accountable to yourself. So this is definitely a skill you'll want to develop over time, work on it as much as possible. You know, there's no arrival point, nobody's ever perfect, and these are things that even the most successful people still apply in their lives and still struggle with and have to work on consciously, right? So there's always going to be distractions and people trying to pull you away from what you're trying to achieve. So be reliable and be accountable to yourself first. And this will allow you to be reliable and accountable to others, especially clients and your community members around you. I also wanted to just throw up a kind of example schedule similar to what I would follow. This isn't my exact daily routine and I wanted to tailor it to the average person that's most likely working five days a week. So you want to develop yourself a daily routine. It's good to have a schedule up on paper. Um, I usually just write mine out in hand with pencil because it makes it really easy to just erase something and change something if you'd like to do. Uh, so if we look at the first three hours of the day here, I have a 16 hour day um, with eight hours omitted for sleep on this schedule. And basically what I like to do is set aside the first three hours of the day for yourself. So you can set these aside for meditation, physical training, maybe you do martial arts training or physical training, um, exercise, whatever you classify as training, um, and then an hour for education. So reading something, studying something that um, you're interested in in or uh, maybe something that you need to study to uh, propel you forward in a certain aspect of your life. What I like to do is give myself one day off from everything that's in my schedule. And what I do is I stagger these days off. So pretty much every day of the week, I have one day off from something. You know, it's important to set some time aside from something so that you don't burn out and uh, get sick of, of whatever it is you're, you're uh, trying to set up in your schedule there, whether it be a physical workout or educating yourself, anything can burn you out. Um, you know, some of these things, maybe you will feel like meditating for for five or ten minutes on your day off that's fine if you choose to do it what this allows you to do as well is it gives you one day of fluff so that if anything comes up in your life and life will happen um, you're able to shuffle these around so meditation uh, the day off is Saturday what if it doesn't work out for me on Monday well it didn't work out on Monday I'll make up for it on Saturday but again be accountable to yourself and 
do your best to follow your schedule. Don't let anybody pull you away from prioritizing your time. So again, we, we go to training and we have Friday off from training, go to education, and we have Thursday off from education. So, you know, it kind of frees up some time for you every day. You have a little bit of extra time to do maybe an extra task. Maybe you have to fix a leaky faucet at your house, whatever, right? Life happens. So it's important to leave time. That's the most important aspect. If you overload your schedule and make it too strict, you won't be able to follow it and it won't help you, right? So um, after the three hours initially in the morning, I have another hour there. So, um, you know, let's say that this is 5 a.m. and somebody starts work at 9 a.m. So they would get up at 5, um, meditation till 6, training till 7, education till 8. Now they have from 8 till 9 to, um, you know, eat breakfast, get to work, whatever they, they have to do. Um, and then the average person will have a 5 five day work week in there and just look at what this does to your schedule folks this is why um, you need to go back to episode seven of cognitive concurrence and look at the ways that i presented to increase freedom in your life because if you think think you're free and you work a nine to five um, five days a week look at this schedule and and tell me what dominates this schedule are you in control of this schedule or is your employer in control of this schedule, right? Are, are your finances, uh, your financial obligations in control of this schedule that require you to work this much? Um, you know, so it's different when you're working for yourself and you're, you're attempting to build assets for yourself. Um, when you're dedicating this much time um, you know, this, this, this much of your life to, to something like uh, working for somebody else, um, it, it drastically reduces your freedom. So what I did on Saturday was I kind of tried to present uh, what my typical day would look like. Um, and again, these aren't exactly, this isn't exactly what I do in a day. It isn't the exact times or anything like that, but it's just the, an example of what you could do. Um, if you were free of, of working a nine to five for somebody else. So, um, again, when you're, when you're a free and you're, you're self-employed or self-reliant, you need to be accountable. So a lot of people will have two days off a week, but just with uh, meditation and training and education, I will also only take one day a week off of any one of these things. So you see, I have three hours on Saturday um, set for website. That would be from, I, I give myself a two hour cushion after my three hours in the morning. So instead of the one hour cushion that uh, most people would get, I have a two hour cushion. Um, next, I have a three hour block of say, working on one of my websites that's uh, for a survival income or, or something like that. You know, everybody has to survive in this reality we live in. So I have three hours dedicated to building my company website, we'll say. Um, after those three hours, again, I have another two hour window. Um, and, and this allows me, again, the ability to sh not only shuffle from day to day, but shuffle my whole day around if I want to, right? Life happens, like I said. I can always push those that website down two hours and have a four-hour free window in the morning if I want. <clears throat> I really don't recommend... Um, taking away those three hours from yourself in the morning. Uh, I'm actually going to do a video just on developing uh, a morning ritual for yourself as well, because I think uh, focusing on yourself and your self-development right at the beginning of the day is a really great way to um, improve your physical, mental, and spiritual health. And if you develop consistency with this, um, you'll achieve amazing results in, in shorter periods of time. Again, being accountable and responsible to yourself, right? Um, so after the two hour window in, be, uh, in between website, I have show. So say I'm developing my video show like I'm doing today. I set aside uh, two hours for myself to do that. Then I have another two hour window. And then say I want to study Latin that night. You know, so I give myself an hour to, to learn a new language at night. And then I have another hour to wind down, do whatever you want to do, read a book, um, you know, watch, uh, watch an episode of something, whatever you want to do. You know, it's always good to relax and unwind, play an instrument, do whatever you do to kick back, right? Sit out on your deck, um, just kind of relax and kick back right before you go to bed. So what this Saturday here is uh, what a typical day would look like for somebody that doesn't necessarily have to work for an employer and doesn't have large financial obligations as well, right? If you have 
a ton of financial obligation, obviously, even as a self-employed individual running your own business, you will have to spend the majority of your time working, maybe even more time working than you would have had you, um, you know, stayed employed with a, with an employer that, that just had you working nine to five. Right. Um, so yeah, you know, this is just, uh, you know, one example of, how you can uh, take control of your own time and give yourself the space in your day to develop the skills necessary uh, to become a self-starter. So I hope everybody appreciated this short video. Once again, if you go back to episode seven of Cognitive Concurrence, I get into a bunch of ways to increase freedom in your life today. And becoming a self-starter definitely goes hand in hand with that video. So if you found this information helpful, be sure to jump to episode seven of Cognitive Concurrence and check out my website, cognitiveconcurrence.com for my full body of work. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'm Jay Anarkhan. Take care. Stay free.